Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about TypeScript. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, regarding TypeScript with Node and Express, do you have a boilerplate configuration that you can recommend? I've done my own setup that works, but I don't know if it's best practice. I guess that that is also due to the fact that Node and Express, uh, they're very unopinionated. I have considered moving over to Django, Django because of the more standardized way of doing things. How should I approach this issue? So, I told this person basically if you don't know any better, uh, just use Nest.js or Next.js, doesn't really matter, or like any framework, because that's kind of the thing uh, with, at least from my, exp this is just me talking now. Uh, the reason why I use Express usually, uh, I just, I'll raise my finger and say the reason why I use Express is not, uh, I don't use Express for everything, I depends on what I'm doing, but it's usually my default, is because most of the stuff that I am making when I am building something where next where Express is a good fit, is just this plain old sleepy REST API or something similar to that. It's not something very advanced or it might be a very simple static website or whatever, right? And I have enough experience working with multiple languages. Uh, so I don't really need an opinionated way of doing something. I don't really want one. And that's why Express works for me, because as the subscriber is saying, it's kind of unopinionated, depending on how you define that, of course. Uh, so the trade-off there is that, well, I have all this freedom now, but I have to build everything myself. And if I know, if I know what I'm doing, that's exactly what I'm looking for. But if I'm like this person who's unsure if I'm doing the right thing, well, that brings us to an interesting thing. This is pretty much the thing that I try to promote. If you don't know any better, why try to figure it out? There are people who have made these decisions on your behalf and I know that it's scary for you to like you, you second guess yourself and you think well am I really using the best practices am I really doing things the right way etc etc and I'll tell you the secret guys if you go right now and you go and Google for best practices in say node or JavaScript or whatever you're gonna find a hundred articles where some of the stuff is gonna be the same and some of the stuff is just gonna be stuff that the author of that article has written themselves some of the best practices that I believe in, they're not on a single list I've ever seen anywhere. And I can swear by them. I could stand on a Google Tech Talk and tell every single developer in the world that I think that this is a good idea. I think it should be considered best practice. And that's not because I, I don't... Uh, well, it's not because I don't have a idea of what the community thinks is the right thing and that's kind of the thing guys like you get to a point with where you know what the community considers to be best practice and then you have your own ideas and so forth and the balance between these things is that you know what works for you and why it works and then you know what the community thinks works and then you have to and sometimes the community is right and sometimes you're going to be right but if you're not at that point where you have enough experience to know that well this is a good choice this is a not a good not a good choice then you should simply trust what the majority is saying because if nothing else you're not going to you're not going to be any worse off than the community because it's very unlikely that you will without any experience know better ways of doing things than the vast majority of developers because they simply have more experience in the area. The, the reason why I can kind of go out on a limb well, if we just assume, like, I mean if, if you're doing your own thing, if you're on your own project, experiment, go crazy, try things out, see how it works. That's kind of how you figure out what's going to work and what's not going to work. Try to avoid that if, it po if 
possible uh, when you're dealing with like s customers and so forth. Uh, but with, on your own, on your own stuff, go wild. Like just experiment with it. But if you don't know any better, just go with the boring, obvious thing. Because at the very least, you will that, that that's going to get you to the point where you understand how the community does something or how somebody else does something. And when you master that their way of doing something, after a little while, you're going to realize that this works for me, this doesn't work for me, and you're going to start thinking of your own ways of doing things in a better way. It's exactly how I did it. That's literally the way that I did it, where I. I mean, when you start out, you know nothing about anything, so you have to just take somebody else's workflow and basically copy paste it. And that's, if you haven't thought about it, that's where design patterns come from, that's where domain driven design come from, test driven development, how MVC, all of the stuff that you take as, oh, this is like the definition of what it means to be a software developer, is literally that. Somebody else came before you, thought, hey, you know what? this is a pretty good idea and then other people followed along and now it's considered best practice so before you know it I mean you might actually invent new quote-unquote best practices and not even realize it but you have to start somewhere so that's all that's all I'm gonna say on this so what I want you to take away from this is that if you are unsure of what's considered best practice in Node and Express and TypeScript and so forth, uh, simply take one of the standard, boring, obvious choices. It's the same advice I would give to somebody who starts in Java or PHP or Ruby or... It doesn't really matter. Just pick a framework that does the thing that you need learn that thing because it's simply a higher abstraction of what you might be doing in something as say, as lower level as say express and it's the same deal with say C and C++ and so forth they are lower ver lower level versions of things that ha that there's a higher version of if that makes sense and the, on the only time you want to go dip down and become even lower level is either for your own learning or if you have realized that you are at a level of skill where you simply know exactly what you need and a lot of the stuff that you get in the higher level abstraction is just in your way or it's like extra noise or something like that and you want to slim things down but very few people start at that level of mastery of something so it's usually better to be at the higher at, to, at the very least to start off at the higher level of abstraction so that you can kind of get in like you, you you learn that stuff and then you realize that there's even more stuff underneath and then you go lower if that makes sense if you approach it that way you pro you will always be in a good sweet spot because you will be as productive as you can be without having to make a lot of very complicated decisions that is going to blow up in your face until you're ready to make those decisions have a great day